Hey all today we're going to talk more about circles and segments and how they interact to form angles and arcs. The first type of special angle we'll talk about are inscribed angles. So I have an example of that right here. This angle, angle ABC, is an inscribed angle because it's formed by two chords, chord AB, chord BC, and its vertex is on the circle, vertex B. And so the relationship that exists is that this angle, the measure of this angle is equal to the measure of the arc it intercepts, so arc AC, divided by 2. So that's what I have right here. And just to point out that in this program I'm using Geometer Sketchpad as sort of a little nuance. In order to measure this arc, I need to add a third point in. And so it's going to call it arc ADC. It's a minor arc we'll still call it AC. It's just kind of a nuance of the program. So let me measure angle ABC close to 61 degrees and I'll measure that arc. As you can see normally we'd name it just AC but in this program it needs to grab a third point to measure it close to 122. And now I'm going to divide that arc by 2 and you can see it's the same as the measure of the angle. And so just to show you that that's not going to change, I'm going to move around one of my points. And you can see that my angle is still equal to my arc divided by 2. So let's do a couple practice. Here I have a inscribed angle. I know it's inscribed because its vertex U is on the circle. I'm looking for the measure of the angle. And here's the arc that it intercepts. The two sides create this arc TV. So I like to always write the formula or write the relationship every time and then plug in. So the question marks the angle, 86 was the arc, and I can simplify to find out the angle is 43 degrees. In this one, I have again an inscribed angle. It's vertex S is on the circle. This time I know the angle measure and I want to know the arc that it intercepts. So again, I'll write the relationship and then I'll plug in what I know, 75 for the angle, question mark for the arc. To get rid of that divided by 2, I multiply both sides by 2 to find out the arc is 150 degrees. Sometimes these things, as you might have guessed, aren't always so straightforward. But we can still use intercept, or I'm sorry, inscribed angles and their intercepted arcs to find out pieces of a circle. And so I see here a diameter, and a diameter creates a semicircle, which is 180 degrees. And I'm looking for a part of that semicircle, just this part, arc RS. I do have an inscribed angle here that's 55 degrees, but that inscribed angle makes this arc, or intercepts this arc, TS. That arc in purple and the arc in yellow make the semicircle. So if I find out what this purple arc is, I can subtract it from 180 to find out the piece I'm looking for. So I'll use my inscribed angle to find arc TS. I'll plug into the formula and I'll find that arc TS is 110. So if I subtract 110 from 180, it'll give me my yellow arc. So I'll do 180 minus arc TS, and I get that that piece I'm looking for is 70 degrees. We'll do another one. Again, I have a diameter, which makes this a semicircle of 180 degrees. I know one piece of the semicircle. And I want to know this inscribed angle. That inscribed angle is related to this piece of the semicircle, arc FG. So again, we have a, a situation where I can subtract an arc from 180. I can find the measure of FG by doing 180 minus that 100 degree arc. And I find out that FG is 80 degrees. And now I have an inscribed angle. I know it's intercepted arc. And I can plug into the formula to find that angle to be 40 degrees.
So I want you to try this one, find the value of question mark, and then insert only the value. Again, find the value of question mark and insert just the value. So we do have another uh, scenario where we have an angle formed by two segments where the vertex is on the circle. And that happens when we have a chord whose endpoint is also a point of tangency, so a place where a tangent line touches the circle. And it looks like this. Here I have chord CD, and one of its endpoints is the place where tangent BC touches the circle. That's called a point of tangency. And so they create this angle, BCD. And that angle intercepts this arc, CD. Again, I had to throw a third point in there so I can measure it, just to not confuse you. And so they have the same relationship as an inscribed angle and its intercepted arc. The angle is equal to the arc divided by 2. So let's measure angle BCD. We'll measure arc CD. Again, I had to throw that third letter in there. And now let's divide the arc by 2. And you can see, again, the angle and the arc are equal. And so I can move that point of tangency around, and the angle and the arc will be equal. It's important to note that this scenario exists sort of on both sides of the picture. So angle BCD is related to this arc here. But also, and let me label this point, angle FCD is related to this arc. And they have the same relationship, that the angle is equal to half the arc. So sort of the same thing happening on both sides of the picture. So let's do a couple examples. Here I have a tangent and a chord. The chord exists between T and U and the chord intersects the tangent at its point of tangency and we have this angle and also the arc it intercepts so we can plug into our relationship and find that that angle is 54 degrees so like i just said in uh, these scenarios there's actually two arcs formed and so you need to be careful here I'm looking for this angle, which is related to this arc. But in this example, I'm given the other arc, which is 210. Well, these two arcs together form the whole circle, and therefore they add up to 360 degrees. So if I subtract this 210 from 360, I'll find that arc in green, which is 150. Arc FG is 150. And then I can plug that into the formula and find out my angle is 75 degrees. So here I want you to find the value of question mark, type in only the value. One last question for today, find the value of question mark one more time and then type in only the value. 